Hello guys, welcome to another video with Cass on the Mizuma channel. What I want to show you guys today is a simple memory system. Uh, yeah, it's this big thing back here, but it's just an expandable system that can be expanded in all directions. And then it created a sort of improvised screen in here, uh, just to show you how we can edit uh, memory bits and things like that. So. Let me start by demonstrating. The first thing we can do is to pull data from uh, the memory array. So if we flick this lever in here, we can read uh, the first memory bank. And I just recorded this, like uh, the shape of a frame in here. And if we don't want to read anymore, just flick the lever again, and then uh, it will clear the screen. It will not read for any, from anything. Let's see what's in the second bank. So uh, have I flicked the lever? Yes, I flicked it. <laughs> All right, so this is the shape of an X in here. Uh, this is not new, of course, uh, but yes, I'll, I'll, we will get there, guys, we will get there. So this one is a checkerboard pattern, uh, and number four is a triangle, and uh, finally, number five is uh, just a cross shape, a little cross. So. I have five memory banks in here, and uh, all of them uh, contain um, uh, 25 bits, 25 cells. So uh, this big thing in here is uh, 125 bits of memory that I can uh, change and store and do whatever I want. I can even do compositions. I can read from more than one place at the same time. We are reading from the last memory bank in there, but I can read from the first at the same time. <laughs> So now you can see the composition of this picture is a, it's a cross in the middle with the frame around it. So we can use it to control background and foreground at the same time if you're trying to do animations. Although this is not ideal for animations because this memory, this memory system is really compact for what it does. It's solid state, so no pistons. It's just torches and repeaters and comparators, which means it should work in pretty much any version of the game. But it's a little bit slow, and the bits are not synchronized. It's easy to synchronize, but they're not uh, synchronized by default. Let's try to clear the screen and show you the last, the last and very important uh, 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 feature of this system, which is the, the ability to record anything that we want, really. So we have the, the screen's cleared now, and uh, you guys saw that we have a cross shape. Uh, stored in the last memory bank, but if I press this button, it will record what it sees now. And now, even if I flick the lever now, uh, this memory bank is cleared. So, yeah, we can do whatever we want. So, <laughs> now, now the improvised uh, user interface comes in hand because we can record anything. Let's just flick this lever in here, and maybe this other one in here. Of course, you can make a, a better uh, survival-friendly interface for this. I just decided not to do it because it's not the point of the video. And I can now record it. It doesn't matter if, if it's showing the, the, the image or not. Uh, we can record it now. It's, it's already done. Uh, and then we can turn off the levers. So no input from the editing area. And now we can pull the image by flicking the lever. And there you go. We just recorded new information. We can record from other memory banks as well. So for instance, we could, is this the checkerboard pattern? Let's turn this off for now. All right, so we have the checkerboard pattern. Uh, and maybe let's activate, the, is this the triangle maybe? Yeah, so this is a composition uh, with the triangle and the checkerboard pattern. And I can record it to any memory bank that I want. I'll just use this one because we just messed with this one. <laughs> anyway, so once again, uh, we can clear the screen. So nothing is showing. And then if I flick the lever now, it will contain uh, the shape that I just asked uh, to be recorded. So yeah, it's a memory bank. It's a memory array that we can expand in any direction. Uh, and uh, we can record things to it. It's very useful if you're trying to do mini games in Minecraft. Maybe if you're trying to do computers in Minecraft, it can be useful because it's very compact, but it's not very fast, so maybe not so useful for computers. So yeah, let me show you how to build it. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is what a memory unit uh, looks like. So yeah, it looks more complicated than what it should be, but that's just because it needs to have all sorts of connections so we can do re really big array such as uh, that one back there. So yeah, the way it works is uh, we can read from the memory, we can write something, so just need to turn on uh, the, the 
just need to put information in and then uh, any pulse I think even it should take pulse will record information to the cell uh, so when the information is not there anymore if it's recorded you can read it back uh, you can record as many times as you want yeah and as I told you guys it's just repeaters and torches it's only 3 by 3 by 5 uh, but it's interesting it's 5 high but uh, the way it, the way I made it you can stack it every 4 blocks vertically which makes it even more compact uh, and uh, yeah not, not too big really really useful it's just a little bit slow <laughs> uh, alright so the way the information is stored is uh, inside the, the, re the locked repeater so if I try to input information and then I briefly empower this you can see that the information is in there so yeah it's it's inside the, the powered repeater and then the information we can read uh, uh, by using these comparators so all I need to do is to empower this line in here and then uh, we can read from the bus uh, and we can have a bunch of memory units connected to the same bus which is really interesting and useful uh, just like we did there this is this is what allows you to uh, to make composite uh, images and such let's start with the blue circuit because uh, it's the part that reads so just do three blocks like so uh, and then here repeater going this way, repeater going the opposite way, and then a comparator that needs to be on subtraction mode. And then now we're going to do the actual memory uh, unit, which is the yellow. So yeah, we can just look at the side here. <laughs> so two repeaters and uh, a repeater lock uh, that actually goes to the other side. So as easy as it is, and I can't make a mistake. <laughs> so uh, it's going to power to this redstone dot in there. And uh, let's build another unit, why not? <laughs> and then we can just extend the bus. There's just one difference that I need to show you. So uh, it's, uh, I'm going to show you uh, how this works in the end of the tutorial. So let's see if I can remember how to build it now. Should be easy, right? All right, so this is the reading area. And now we can do one of this and two repeaters and a repeater lock and then redstone dust down here. All right, so now we can just extend this bust. And uh, the way you extend it is to use a repeater uh, at the beginning of every memory location. So, press some dust, dust. And now we can extend the red circuit like so. And repeaters go uh, here, I guess, yes. Every three blocks. So, there you go. So, let's create a few inputs. They go next to the repeaters. So this is the input for writing and this is the output for reading. We can use redstone dust in here. I will just use the lamps because they are better indicators, but we can just read from the redstone dust as well. All right. So let's try to write some information in here. Let's try to write uh, this. And now we can read from the memory. We can read uh, while, while writing at the same time, I guess, to so if we if we try to write now, yeah, the the bottom will just uh, uh, will basically uh, mirror the the top. There you go, super simple, huh? So yeah, the only the, the possibly more complicated part is to expand to the back, uh, which the only the only thing you really need to add in here uh, is to extend this. like so and then uh, the yellow circuit is also going to be extended like so so that uh, information can be uh, written and uh, read from the back all right so I'll just uh, rebuild this exact same thing here so you guys will be able to see how it works just need to add torches here and here so those buses are supposed to be powered uh, all the time uh, and uh, let's just use a lever to control these things from the sides uh, and maybe a button in here all right so uh, we will record uh, this to this guy right so the first two bits are on and we can read from it uh, by the way you can synchronize this by just using uh, repeaters in there like this this case is really easy I can just put one, one repeater on one tick in there and two ticks in here so two ticks one tick and zero ticks in there and now when I flick the lever the output will be synchronized this is how we synchronize the memory latches 
or the memory array and we're going to record yeah yeah this information to the back so press the button and now we can read it there you go guys we can read from the back we can read from this guy the information uh, is still saved so yeah uh, and the only thing is if you wanna if you wanna stack this uh, vertically you can start building from here so yeah as I mentioned before so let's see if this is aligned I think it is yes so There you go. This is how you stack uh, the memory units on top of each other. All right. So yeah, it's easy to build, not super fast, but it's super compact. It's solid state uh, and you can use those things in your more advanced projects. Hope that you guys enjoyed. If so, leave a like, leave a comment and uh, see you soon guys. Goodbye.